Yo, Skittle Squad, Kelvin here, and today in this video, I'm going to be doing what is the best skills for every single dungeon that you'll be playing in Dungeon Quest. At least at the time of this video, there are eight dungeons so far, and I'm going to teach you guys, you know, what are the best skills in each dungeon for mages and warriors, what are the substitutes that you should be using, and of course, some of those extra skills, those heals, and taunts that you want to hold on to. But of course, before I begin, smash that like button, share, subscribe, everything as such, and without further ado, we are heading into the video. Alright guys, so our first dungeon is definitely going to be Desert Temple. It's pretty much the newbiest one you can start off with. But before I begin talking about skills specifically, I want to let you guys know that in this entire video, I'm going to try to transition from Mage to Warrior just a little bit. But I do have to stress that since I'm a Warrior main, you will see me on a Warrior a lot more. But I will still introduce skills for both classes, Mage and Warriors. And one last reminder, I need you guys to understand that this is my opinion. These are the skills that I prefer and I recommend to you guys, but it's not absolute. So if you disagree with me, that's completely fine. Anyways, the first skill we're going to talk about is Innervate. It's a skill that you can grab for Nightmare Desert Temper or Easy Winter Outpost. 10 second cooldown and it doubles the damage you do when it comes to your magic attacks. It's a very good skill for future use and you want to grab that while you're still doing these dungeons. The next skill I want to talk about is Battle Shouts. It's very equivalent to Innervate when it comes to doubling your damage, but the cooldown for it is 20 seconds, which makes it a lot less useful because less people use it. And of course, you can grab the skill in Winter, Easy, or Desert Temple Nightmare. Now that we talked about two important skills you want to pick up, we do want to talk about the two skills you can actually use for Desert Temple. So I think for Desert Temple, it doesn't really matter what you use. You can pretty much decide whatever the heck you want. But the skill that I'm suggesting is, is the skill Whirlwind, which you can grab from Medium and Insane Desert Temple. And it has 11 second cooldown. It's for physical power, so you can use it as a warrior. Then we have Poison Cloud. Poison Cloud is a skill you can grab for Hard and Nightmare Desert Temple for mages. 10 second cooldown. It does leave behind a Poisonous Cloud, which continuously does damage within a few seconds. So it's a dot damage, damage over time. And with that, we move on to Winter Outpost. Alright, and now we are here in Winter Outpost. Yes, Winter Outpost is the second dungeon in Dungeon Quest, and I'm gonna tell you guys which skill to grab and hold on to. So the skill for Warriors is the Arcane Barrage. It's a level 44 skill, you can only get it from hard and insane winter outposts. It's the best skill for warriors when it comes to physical damage. 7 second cooldown everyone. Then the next one for mages is the firebomb. It's actually a extremely power over power skill. You can one shot mobs with this. It summons a huge fireball in front of your enemies that explodes doing huge heavy damage right. 9 second cooldowns, the best mage one. And you can grab it from hard and insane difficulty winter outposts. And now let's move on to the honorable mentions. Taunting Aura. Taunting Aura is a tank skill you want to grab early. You can grab that from medium difficulty winter outpost. Many tanks do want to use that. They'll sometimes hold on to one Taunting Aura and then a heal skill to keep themselves alive. This has a 9 second cooldown. The next one we have is Aura of Life. Aura of Life creates an aura around you and heals you and your teammates. It's a 9 second cooldown. You can grab this from Insane and Nightmare Winter Outpost. It is the most ideal skill for lower level tanks to hold on to until they get a better heal skill. Next up, we have Pyre Island. That's right, Pyre Island is the third dungeon in Dungeon Quest right now. And the warrior skill that I want to recommend to you guys is the Enchanted Spinning Blade. 9 second cooldown. It is the best warrior skill you can possibly get from Pirate Island. And you can only get that from Nightmare difficulty. Moving on, we have Skull Flame. The infinite Skull Flame, everybody. 10 second cooldown. Nightmare skill only. You can grab this only from Nightmare. And it does a crap ton of damage. This is a damage over time. Summons a ghostly skull to burn the ground in front of you. This skill is actually one you should hold on to for the next 2-3 dungeons because I was using Skull Flame for a long time until Samurai Palace guys. Unless they nerfed it recently and I didn't know, this should be the skill you should be holding on to when it comes to a mage. And don't forget, make sure you either use two of them or use Innervate with it. Then we have the Honorable Mention, Universal Heal. This is the only skill in the entire game that lets you heal from spawn to the last boss. 
It pretty much heals anybody inside a dungeon. It doesn't matter where they are. It's a 14 second cooldown. They nerfed it. It used to be a lot shorter cooldown. You can only grab this skill in Insane Nightmare Difficulty Pirate Island. This is a skill you want to hold on to forever. Now we are here in King's Castle. The word skill that I'm recommending is the Blade Throw. 5 second cooldown, very short cooldown, and does 2 hits throwing out back and forth. It's a physical damage one you want for warriors, and you can only get this from Nightmare Difficulty. Then moving on to Electric Boom. It's a mage skill, the one you want to use for King's Castle. You only grab that from Nightmare, 9 second cooldown. And what it does is it summons an electric orb which zaps enemies within an area. You kind of have to lure the mobs around the area and make sure they get damaged, right? Now, the honorable mention, Chain Healing. Chain Healing has the shortest cooldown when it comes to a heal skill. It also has one of the largest range when you have multiple players. It pretty much goes from one person to another person and it keeps chaining on left and right, back and forth, all the way to your teammates. So make sure you guys grab that from Insane and Nightmare Difficulty. Next up, we have Underworld. Underworld is the fifth dungeon in Dungeon Quest. And this is the dungeon where I think has the least diversity when it comes to skills you should use. The first one for Warriors is Rending Slice. Seven second cooldown, you can only grab the skill from Insane. This is a physical power skill. It's very similar to Electric Slash, which we will get to later. This skill is a very good warrior skill because it does high range and then also does bleeding over time, damage over time, which helps you finish up the mobs. Then we move on to Ice Nova. This is the first few skills where you will get a circle surrounding you and you can pretty much do damage around them. It's a very mobile skill and even though I'm not a huge fan of it, it is still a very good skill. It has 9 second cooldown. You can only get this from Nightmare. I recommend this for Mages doing Underworld. But I do want to remind you guys that if you still have Skull Flame, it is still very efficient in Underworld. Now moving on to Samurai Palace. This specific dungeon is the 6th dungeon in Dungeon Quest. And it has quite a few skills I want to mention. First off, starting with Warriors. Two Warrior skills that I'm going to be mentioning. The first one is Lava Lash. This skill has 4 second cooldown, it's a long range, you can only grab this from Insane. And because of its long range, it's very useful for bosses. Now we have Flame Cyclone, a nightmare skill from Samurai Palace, 9 second cooldown. This is the first warrior skill that gives you an extra speed boost and is very useful when it comes to avoiding damage of regular mobs. Both Lava Lash and Flame Cyclone are skills I highly recommend. Now, we look at Illusion Blast, the mage skill that gives you a speed boost. This is of course the first mage skill that gives you a speed boost. It has 8 second cooldown, you can only grab this from Nightmare. I do also highly recommend using this skill as it's very overpowered. And then the honorable mention. The honorable mention here is Ghostly Rampage. Ghostly Rampage itself is a mage skill that does very good damage, but I'm mentioning it here not because of that specific reason, but I wanted to say that this is a skill you want to pick up because it has a 6 second cooldown, but you can use it to climb platforms. You can use it to climb in lobbies, you can use it to climb in dungeons, and you can somehow use it to break out of maps as well. So uh, use it at your own discretion, but still pick this up because it's still quite useful no matter what class you are. All right, heading into the canals, the seventh dungeon in Dungeon Quest. There are quite a lot of skills for us to mention, so we got to start on in. Electric Slash, the first warrior skill you can grab from Insane, seven second cooldown. This warrior skill is extremely exceptional. It's very similar to Rending Slice from Underworld. And what's good about it is when you fling out a slice, it does taking damage at the end and overall does a huge burst. Then we move on to Blade Storm, the second warrior skill that I'm recommending that you can only grab this from Nightmare, 4 second cooldown, it gives you a huge speed boost, it's pretty much an upgrade from the Cyclone, it's also visually less annoying. Now we have the Mage skills, the first one I'm recommending here for Mage is the one you can only grab from Insane, the Tsunami, it's a high damage, 1 burst, 1 tick skill with 5 second cooldown, and it is exceptional when it comes to doing high burst damage on bosses. Now we belong to the Vortex, the second speedy mage skill you can grab from this game. You can only grab it from Nightmare, but only has a 2 second cooldown, and it is extremely obnoxious to use. It literally gives me a seizure every time I'm trying to use it, but it is still one of the best speedy mage skills you can grab from the canals. Now for our honorable mention, Life Pulse. Sends a healing pulse outwards. What happened, it does a few pulses of healing. It is on the 8.3 second cooldown, which is a little bit longer than you want it to be. You can only grab this from Insane and Nightmare Canals, but it is one of the most desirable tank heal skills you could possibly get right now. It's very useful for our tank healers for our next dungeon. 
And now we have Ghastly Harbor, the eighth and hardest dungeon, at least at the time of this video. So we're going to start it off with the warrior skills because there's a lot to mention. First off, we have the Mighty Leap. You can only grab this from Insane, 3.5 second cooldown. This skill gives you a speed boost, but you only do one burst. It doesn't do damage over time like Blade Storm and Cyclone, but it does do a huge high burst with pretty much a flip, which makes it look really cool. Now we have Post Beam. This is actually my favorite skill in Ghastly Harbor. It's a huge range, does two ticks of damage. It is huge high burst with 3.5 second cooldown. You can only grab this skill in Nightmare. Definitely use this skill a lot for regular mobs or even some bosses. And then we have Phantom Blade. You're probably wondering, Kelvin, why do you have three skills for Ghastly Harbor? Well, I'm mentioning Phantom Blades right here simply because of the fact that Phantom Blades has a four second cooldown and it's very useful for stationary bosses. You can only grab this skill for Nightmare and I highly recommend it when it comes to beating some of the difficult bosses because the damage over time for the skill is immense. Then moving on to mages, the first skill I'm recommending here is the Insane Spirit Bomb. Yes, you can only grab it from Insane, 4 second cooldown, and this is one of the more popular skills because it very much resembles what it pretty much is, an anime inspired skill. Yes, once again, it's a 4 second cooldown guys, and yes, I do highly recommend using this for fun, but it does cover a big portion of the screen, so you know, just use it carefully. Then we have Smite. This is a Mage Speed skill you can grab from Ghastly Harbor. It's pretty much a little similar to Illusion Blast and Mage Vortex, but this skill right here only does one take. You can grab it from Insane with a 4 second cooldown. And last but not least, we have Void Spheres. That's correct, I mentioned 6 skills for this dungeon. I was in the dilemma of putting in Void Spheres or not, but I do want to add that Void Spear is a 4.5 second cooldown skill that you can only grab from Nightmare. It is a high range skill that does a lot of damage over time. Yes, I'm pretty sure if I didn't put this skill in, everyone's going to go crazy and say, Hey Kelvin, why didn't you put this in? Are you stupid? But I wasn't sure because the only reason Void Spheres is better than some of the skills for mages in Gas harbor is because of its high range and pretty darn good burst i think spirit bomb has a bigger burst but then again spirit bomb doesn't have a better range so definitely go grab the skill if you guys prefer range for mages and with this it seems like we're done with all the dungeons all right guys uh so that's pretty much it i hope you guys uh learn and figure out what kind of skills you want to hold on to as you level up throughout the dungeons and i hope this video was helpful for you make sure you guys like share and subscribe and of course until we play again next time peace out y'all